Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Live with Sandra V. And see my little budgie on my little screen? <laughs> anyway, there's always a technical issue, but it's no problem. Anyway, if we have not met before, I want to welcome you um, to a, another episode. And if we have met you before, um, welcome back. Now, if you are here for the first time, let me get rid of my keyboard before I have more problems for the day. If um, you are here for the first time, I would like for you to type in, I'm new for the first time. This way we can give you a special shout out and the regular viewers that come in every week can say hello to you as well. Well, if we have not met before, my name is Sandra Van Sickle, and usually Kenny V is over here on my side, but he's actually over in the control panel. That's why we have the budgie in the beginning. It wasn't my fault. <laughs> I love it. Blame him from something, right? Okay. Oh my gosh. Anyway, uh, real quick, I just want to say that this will be the final episode in the designing panel um, series. And as if you all have been watching along, you know that we have been working on these panels. Now, we have put a lot of elements, a lot of design elements into these panels. And some of you may have done some or all of them in your workroom. And some of you may just be getting started and may feel a little bit overwhelmed that if you design panels, that you might have to put everything in here and you don't. Because see here, I, I just want to remind you that our goal is to educate, inspire, and promote others within the industry. And I certainly hope that um, I have been able to inspire you to create panels for yourself or for others. So like I said, the, the different elements that we have put in the panels is, you know, we put this uh, banding, this velvet banding down the lead edge, and we have this little uh, half inch flange along with the cording along the top and of course we've done the cutout uh, goblet pleated panels I mean pleats and we have drafted the patterns uh, pattern for that so again I hope that all of you will be able to incorporate one or all of these elements into the panels that you design now before we get started I just want to say hello to everyone and a couple of weeks ago, because we were away last week, I can't believe a week ago we were in Corpus Christi hanging out with um, Melissa Hammond in her, her, at her home. Uh, but I um, just want to say welcome. Oh, see, I get my brain gets ticking and I, I forget what I need to say. <laughs> but anyway, we, um, see, I forgot. I'm just going to say hello to you and it'll come back to me. It's been a, a long day. Okay, so we have here, hello, Krista Madison. I know what I was going to say now. I'm going to say it real quick. Two weeks ago, we started asking all of you to tell us your name, the name of your business, if you have one, and the city and state that you're from, because I am compiling a list, and Ken and I are going to get a map, and we're going to put it on the uh, wall, and we're going to start pinning to see where everybody is from. And I'm so excited because we've had people, we've had people in here from Ireland and from the UK and from Canada and all over the United States. And we travel a lot, so you just never know when you were going to be in your neck of the woods. But we'd like to give you a shout out. So, okay, back to saying hello. Hello, Krista Madison and Ruth Zoller. I was saying, Krista is from um, Stanford, Connecticut. Yeah. And Ruth is from Minnesota. I forget the name of your town. I want to say Monticello. Huh? Monticello, yeah. And mm -hmm. hi, Debbie. Uh, let, tell us where you're from, Debbie uh, Beachy. And then um, anyone else? Yeah, we come on a little bit early, make sure everything's working. Sylvia May. Sylvia, I don't have my list with me. Okay, but you told us where you were from, and I need to um, remember that. And yes, well, hello, Debbie. And so glad that you're here for the first time. Now, I do want to say if anybody here has missed um, the last, the first four episodes, go right on over to my uh, YouTube channel, livewithsandrav.com, and you will find uh, there's a playlist, and it's called the Designing Panel Series. Okay, so, um, and you're from Wisconsin. Okay, well, welcome, and everybody say hello, hello to Debbie as well. 
All right, I am going to jump right in because we have a lot to do and I do want to finish this tonight. Now, if things start to take a little bit of time, a little bit longer than I expect, um, I'm going to jump in and show you how I have finished some of it off. We'll sew some and demo some, okay? All right, if everybody's ready, give me a thumbs up. Okay, all right, I'm gonna turn this over to Ken, so he's gonna monitor it. Let's, let's see how, how well that goes. <laughs> yeah, let's see how that goes. Oh, it's so great to have everybody here. It's so great. I, I, I still think I'm kind of um, travel logged or something. I'm tired. Okay. Like I said, you all, we remember uh, we started with this design and we picked out our fabrics and we drafted the pattern and, and you've seen me hold this up and this is where we are now. Okay. Well, that will be the end, I should say. Okay. Let me move this out of the way. All right. Well, I think that um, two weeks ago, uh, we left off uh, from, let's see, we left off, we had layer all of our, la our layers, our lining, our inner lining, and our face fabric. And we had, let me see if I can get a different view here so you can see it. Okay. And so we layered everything and we went ahead and rolled in our return uh, facing. And remember, this is a one and a half, one and a half turn. And we went ahead and put some pins in here. We didn't sew it yet. And along the lead edge, my little device is in the way. Let me move it. Okay, don't me drop it. And then along the lead edge, we did the same. We smoothed the velvet around to the edge. And we brought it to the back. And we folded it over. And we went back and we checked and we made sure we did a little ruler made sure that it was the right width all the way down and then we we did some pinning and again we did not um, sew this yet okay so I've, I've removed the pins because I've been moving it around so uh, I've moved the pins and now I'm going to open this up uh, flat over here and at this point what we want to do because you know fabric can shift around on us and we want to make sure that we have the we still have the length that we need so we need the finish width plus what you all remember what we need for the top we need the half of an inch so we need to make sure that we have that and this is just my little sample if I was working with my panel um, I think it's uh, gonna be 80 inches I would have the 80 and a half I think this one's 27 and a half. So I'm gonna measure, and actually this one's coming in at, yep, if you can hold that for me. This is coming at 27 and a half. And this way, if you go along and you're running a little bit short, then you need to go ahead and if you don't know, smooth your fabric out or make the adjustment, go back and, and fix your, your hem if you have to take it out because you don't want it to be rolling. And if, this is crucial, I think, along the lead edge. Uh, because anytime we stitch or glue or do press anything with a lead edge, what happens? It want, it tends to shrink up. Okay. So I'm going to make sure, let me change the view here, that that's what I have along this edge. And I actually have a little bit extra. And if I remember, I did that on purpose. But I want to go, and I'm going to go ahead, I hope you can see this, with it and do my 27 let's see can you might have to hold that for me because I'm okay. okay so 27 and a half and I'm gonna move it over a little bit more and mark my 27 and a half and actually what I'm going to do is so I only have to cut what I'm gonna bring my facing back around. I guess I jumped the gun there. I actually did the other big panel a few weeks ago, so I'm trying to remember what I did. <laughs> Sometimes we just um, remember what we do need to do along the way. Okay, I can we'll hold that. So I'm gonna mark my 27 and a half. And I'm gonna check and make sure that that's what I have. And I do, and I have it here. And along the edge. Yes, perfect, perfect, perfect. 
So now that I know this is correct, move my mouse. I am going to go ahead and cut this. I don't have a pen there. How many of you cut through pens before? My poor scissors. It's just thick because it had the glue there. Okay, so I'm just going to cut off this excess inner lining because we do not need it and it will just be in our way. So what are you all working on this week? Anything special? Anything fun? I've had a Jean Little in the house before. She's from uh, Oakboro, North Carolina. Oh, no, I don't think so. Welcome, Jean. I, I didn't recognize the name. She's got a business. It's uh, Jean's Creative Stitches. Oh, and where, where is it at? Oakboro. Oakboro? Yeah. Well, welcome, Jean. Whereabouts is Oakboro? And uh, uh, Marsha Grass threads. Uh, she's welcome and Debbie as well as Ruth and some other folks. Awesome. And uh, Bonnie's still in that room and upholstery services uh, says hello. All right. Well, I'm so glad that you guys are all here. Nice to have new folks with us. And you can ask questions along the way and every so often I'll stop and answer them. Okay. I'm going to go back to my other view here so you can see. I've taken um, the facing. Now the facing is well, let me change. It's going to go behind the pleats, and this is the panel. And you can see it is have a nice large facing that goes behind, and actually it is what goes inside the goblet. And we have cut this at nine nine inches. And we've cut it the length of our pattern that we've made. And I've folded up one, uh, actually I've searched first, searched one end first, and then folded up one inch and I top stitched it. Okay. So now I'm going to take this and I am going to open my return and I'm going to line this up right along this edge. I mean, you take out another pin. We've been cleaning up in here and moving around still. Um, Kim's going to be giving an installation class on Thursday um, for the local WCAA. And so I've moved my sample around and pinned and unpinned it. And I didn't want it to come apart. Okay. So I'm going to line it right along the top. And I'm going to bring it right here to the lead edge. Okay, now it is, we still have this um, banding piece that goes around to the back like that. So that's why that is hanging over there. But if I pull it back, you see that this is the panel here. Can you all see that? And we've attached the banding and the flange to that edge. If I want to, I can bring this right over and I'm going to lift this up a little bit so you guys can see better. Right. Yeah, I'm right on the edge. I apologize. I try to get my my uh, my camera to focus in right and it wanted to give me grief today. Okay, so I've laid face down the facing and if I put this fold this banding back you will see that it lines up with the face of the panel. So I'm going to put it back over here so it's nice and flat I think we're on the table. Again, I'm lining it up to this edge. I don't know why this piece is just a tad bit short, but... Okay. All right. You can throw some pins in here if you want to, just for a second. But yeah, I don't know if that is necessary. So again, for shifting it, reposition. And then I'm going to go ahead and take um, my piece of buckram. Now my piece of buckram, I'm going to line it up with the same edge. And I am going to 
need to make sure that I'm going to do this right. Yes. And I am using, this is iron-on buckram, and this is actually 6-inch buckram. You can use 4-inch if you like. I just de determined that I was going to use the 6, uh, because when if I stitch down, because of the cutout, I wanted to stitch down a little bit further on my pleat. So I have got the um, iron-on. If, if you touch it, you can feel the roughness of it, and that is up because once we get to the step that we're going to apply it, um, it's going to go to the back of my lining and adhere to that. Okay, so I'm going to lay this right along that top edge as well, and it goes end to end. Perfect. Okay. Now Does what? it only adhere to one piece of fabric, one side? Yeah, and the reason I'm going to show you is why I'm doing this now. I'm not the buckler's not going to go in right now, but I want it to match up uh, when I cut out. I want it to match up to the face, and so I thought this was the best way to do it. Okay, but this is all. I mean, this is custom. This is all trial and error, and the thing about it is, is that there is more than one way to skin a cat. You all might d determine um, that you have a better method that you want to use. But for right now, this is what I'm going to do. Okay, so here is the pattern that we have drafted. And I need to lay this down, on t uh, face down. And the reason why I'm la laying it face down, because we have to remember we make these panels, we need to make a right side and a left side. And as we've cut it out, this is flopping on me. Okay. And if I lay this out on top of the fabric right now, this will tell me this is my three inch facing, this is my three and a half inch return, and on the other side is my um, my lead edge, is my lead edge with the flange. So we know that's not the way this panel is made. So all we have to do is simply turn it over and lay it down. And here you see that we have the three and a half and the half inch flange area. So we're going to take this and your, um, your banding that wraps around the back, it will be out flat. Do not catch this into the underside. I only needed to do that whenever I cut off the top to make it nice and even. I'm going to line this right up. Again, I wish I could move my camera for you. I'm going to line it, and if I fling it back, it's going to match up with the, the face fabric on the underside. Okay, <coughs> I'm going to line that up there, and I'm going to line my pattern up along the top edge, making sure everything is even. Let me just stab it with a few pins. What did everybody say? What are they working on? Uh, Sylvia May is uh, watching, take care of her mom this month. Oh. And uh, Jean Little says Oak uh, Borough is 30 miles east of Charlotte. Oh, okay. So you know, you know, 30 miles east of Charlotte. Okay. Let's get closer to the same. Yeah. You get close to me. You only um, so Charlotte is probably a good what three, three and a half yeah, hours from three, us. Two and a half. So then you're only about two and a half. That is awesome. Love our North Carolina. We love everybody, but it's nice to know that we have North Carolina folks. Okay, so I've got this all laid down, and it's nice and even, and it's flat and smooth. And I'm going to go ahead, and I'm going to cut out for the pleats. And I'm going to lean back here and make sure I don't catch that little flange in there. I want to cut that. And it's right where it should be. I should have my little just a smidge over. Because I can see my line through here. And that's my little flange. Line, so I might need to move it just a smidge. Okay. And that's a technical term? A smidge. Yes, if you've ever taken my classes, uh, my students laugh at me. Because there's two terms that I tend to use a lot. And smidge and budgie. Those are my words. Those are my words I'd like to use. Okay. And I'm cutting through all the layers. I'm cutting through the face fabric, 
I'm cutting through the lining, I'm cutting through the inner lining, I'm cutting through my buckram, my facing, I'm cutting through everything. And it is thick. There's a lot of layers on here. Okay. And do you see why I'm cutting out the buckram at the same time? Now, you know that I am cutting on the cutting line, obviously. And so the buckram is not going to fit right away. And in a little while, I'll show you how we're going to put it in there. We'll have to trim it back. But this way, it already, you know, gives us a baseline to start with. So, whoop, got the lining piece. There's a lot of fabric in here. I was working on the, um, I'm not going to do this all the way across. I was working on the big panel today. And, you know, anytime you pattern draft, you know, I would highly recommend that if you can make a mock up with the actual fabric and the layers, if you're making something for the first time. This way, you know, if you're going to um, change your mind how something's going to, how something's going to look or you can then make those decisions with your mock up. Now I did, if you all remember, I made a mock up. Uh, well, I don't know, maybe in the first second episode, I don't, I don't really recall a little a lining one. And here, here we go. I made this little lining uh, mock up just to try to get the depth of the cutout. And I put this little gather in the bottom to pull the uh, pull the pleat together, and I really loved it. Well, I found out today that my little gathering with all this fabric didn't look so pretty but I was able to you know modify and I thought okay that that was a good lesson something to teach all of you so if you like I said if you were you know doing this for a client or even yourself because what you make for yourself is just as important what you make for the client because it can be a selling point this is shifting on me a little bit um, you know, it's, it can be a, a, a form of advertisement if you have uh, folks over, right? And they can recommend you and they check out your drapes. How many of you have people come in and they go, Oh, I bet you your house is so decked out with beautiful drapery. And what do we usually tell them? We're like the cobbler that the, the, their kids don't have any shoes, right? Okay, felt like there was a pen in there. So anyway, yeah, so that's, I'm going to be telling you about some of the things I learned. Uh, I was thinking about, I was making the panel today, is that if you can't, there is something in here. <clears throat> yeah, it's a pen. And I just put a burr on my scissors. They're not my best scissors, but they're good ones. So watch out for pins. Take them out if you can. Anybody ask questions, Mr. Kitty B? No, I think they're all sleeping. Okay. All right. So there we have it. I have cut this out, and that's why I have my little burr. So Ruth, you're out there. Is it still snowing? Are you guys have had some really bad weather? How's everybody else? We've hit some a little bit misty rain fog here. Oh. Okay, now I can remove my pattern and save it for the yeah. opposite side. Okay, and I'm going to stick it up here because I don't need it. And I'm going to take my buckram and I'm just going to put it to the side. I don't need it right now. And now I am left with uh, my uh, panel with the facing and I can begin adding the cording. Um, if you remember um, one of the oh, probably the last episode or the one before we talked about how we would measure for the cording to get the right amount. I don't know about you but sometimes I, I usually make more than I need and I kind of have it hanging around. Sometimes I save it. Um, I'm trying not to be a fabric hoarder. So I have been trying to 
get rid of it. That is hard. How many of you out there are fabric hoarders? I haven't noticed. You haven't noticed? That you're trying to get rid of it. Oh, you have? Oh, yes, you have. <laughs> Uh, Bonnie, uh, sewing uh, room, uh, she loves the cabinet behind you. Oh, thank you. And Ruth said, uh, stop just before sunset and sunshine for about 45 minutes. Uh -huh. uh, lots of snow here. Oh, man. Yeah. I bet Debbie uh, in uh, Wisconsin's probably got some snow. Yes. Do you have snow, too? We haven't really had our... We had all at once in December. Yeah. And how much did we have? Like an inch? No. Uh, Was it? I don't remember. Raleigh, uh, the airport, said uh, eight something inches. Oh, did we? Yeah, I guess you're right. And but we didn't get very we much here. Five or so down here. Oh, I don't remember. If it wasn't a second ago, it, it really doesn't. Okay. All right. So I have pinned. Let me give you a little bird's eye view here. Um, I've done some um, pinning here. And uh, is that coming up on the screen? I have my little thing. Is it coming up on the live? Do you guys see a little... Um, no. Square? Okay. Not yet. So I could get rid of it if it's up there. One of those. They have updates. We get on here and they have updates. Okay. I have pinned this together and now I am going to um, put the cording in. And as I was talking about the cording, and uh, we took a, a little tape measure, a plastic tape measure, or you can take the beaded weight chain and run it along um, the edge. Actually, I, me I think I measured one of the, the swoops and I measured, I knew how far apart this was and I measured one of those and times it out and added it up along with my two, my lead edge and my return edge to get how much cording that I needed. I did cut this on the bias. Um, I, I had a, I had a lot of, so I did have a join in here and I went ahead and, um, ran this through the serger to get a half inch. My serger is kind of set that if I run the, um, the foot of the serger uh, right up next to the cording, that it gives me a nice half of an inch. How many of you do that? If you upholsters, I think a lot of the upholster folks do that. Okay. So now we're going to go ahead and I'm going to move this over and put my little sewing machine up here. Marsh grass, uh uh, she was wondering where you get the iron on Oh, okay. Um, I get it from Rowley Company, um, R-O-W-L-E-Y. And if you're in business, you can set up a um, post-sale account with them. And they, they're in North Carolina. Uh, where are they? In, uh, they're not in High Point. They're in... Um, I don't know if it's Gastonia. Guess, maybe Gastonia. Yeah. Uh, and then... Uh, uh, Kathy, uh, Jackson, Bryant, uh, she enjoyed watching the full episodes of the panels. Oh, thank you, uh, Kathy. How are you? And again, everyone, um, if you're just coming in, welcome. And Ken, I hope you're you're catching everybody that's coming in, that we said hello to everybody. Jenny is, uh, Jenny uh, Gadon, she's watching, but she didn't make any comments. Okay, Jenny, if you're new, I think is that someone that's new? I don't recognize you. Well, if you're new here or you're, you're returning, um, like I said, a few weeks ago we started that please put in your name, the name of your company, um, if you have one, and you don't have to have one to watch, obviously, but uh, the name of your company and the city and state that you are from, because we're going to start putting uh, little pins on the map. Uh, Bonnie's uh, sewing room, uh, she's in New Brunswick, uh, Canada, I guess. Yes. And, uh, she's, uh, they're expecting... 30 uh, CMSs uh, tomorrow. Oh my god. I guess that'd be centimeters. Yes. Oh my goodness. And Ruth, uh, Ruth is asking, what size cording did you use? Oh yes. Thank you, Ruth. I did have that in my notes and didn't tell you. Um, I On this one here, I used an eighth of an inch cording. And you can certainly use a smaller one if you want to. I know it looks a little bit larger than that because um, it, this is velvet and so Anytime you have a little bit thicker fabric or this with a pile or a nap, it bumps it out just a little bit more, but it was nice. Okay, so I'm going to get the sewing machine view here for you, and I'm just going to take this, and I am going to, as our home ec teachers taught us, if you had home ec, um, we're going to put right sides together, and I'm going to stitch this cording in between the face and the, um, 
the back facing. Now, if you can see here, I've taken this banding, uh, this lead edge, and I have brought my facing out flat. Okay, see, we pinned it to the back, remember? Well, now I'm going to open this up flat. And I was thinking about this too, that this is nice that we have this uh, edge, this extra fabric here to go around the back to make our back facing because a lot of times when we're making just panels without a facing, without a banding, we start with the selvage edge and we roll that to the back. So this little extra that we're getting here um, gives us a little bit more width uh, for our panel or actually it probably really helped us uh, have the bigger, a little bit bigger pleat because remember I wanted five and a half inches in my pleat. Okay, I am going to take my cording and I'm going to put it right along this edge here and that's where I'm going to start. Now along the way, um, let me move here, um, I, there's two ways that you can do things sometimes. I went ahead on my and I left my cording in here. I, well, actually I might have taken the end I might have taken the end and pulled it out a little bit and cut it back. It is up to you. You can put the um, the cording along this edge and pull out some of the cord to leave it kind of flat in this area because it's going to roll to the back. You can leave it here. Uh, you could, I could have probably brought it around this edge if I wanted to. So there's a lot of different things that you could do, but this is the way I did it. And Kathy Bryant in uh, Alabama, she's a retired home ec teacher. I remember her saying that. So did you teach everybody right sides together and when you make a seam, you press the seam? My teacher always did. Okay. I'm just going to pin this here, but you don't have to pin it. You don't pin the cording. Okay. Now I'm going to sew through all the layers at one time. If you feel uncomfortable doing that, then you can certainly sew one layer, you get it in, and then go, and then you pretty much turn your panel over and follow the line on the other side. I've been putting cording in a long time, and I have decided that if you're in my workroom, <laughs> you pretty much have to put it in and all together. I, I like, it, it seems to go in more even and smoother when you put everything in together, but I know for some, it's like, you feel like you can't do that. Okay, so what time do we have? Okay, so I, hopefully I'll get through putting this in real quick. Okay, let me change my view so you guys can see it. Okay, here we go. I've got to get Mr. Kenny B to let him learn how to be my cameraman. Okay, anybody else new? Just, just need some more coaching. Lord knows I uh, get enough of that. Uh, Ruth is saying that uh, she's watching us on the big screen. They probably have a 100 or 110 inch uh, screen she's watching on, on the TV. <laughs> You're crazy. Yeah. No, that's what she said. Is she? Oh, awesome. Okay, she I... not say what size, but, you know. Yeah. Normally, I would use a um, my walking foot machine, but you can certainly use a home machine with a zipper foot. Okay, I'm going to line that up right down the top. Okay. How many of you have industrials out there? How many of you have walking foot? Uh, Debbie Beach of uh, Wisconsin, she was on sale and she had to go to her uh, PC and she loves your sewing view. Oh, thank you. We've hurt, worked hard at getting it just right so you can see what we're doing, what I'm doing here. And hopefully soon I'm going to be bringing my industrials in here. Okay, so I stitched that on there, and let me go back and make sure that this is all together. And it will shift a little bit on me, I, I am pretty sure. Okay. And as I'm sewing, I can feel, I run my finger along the groove, I can feel that groove. This is the tedious part, you guys, so you're going to have to bear with me. Actually, this machine has a little walking foot lever. Okay, as I get to my corner here, I'm going to give some clips because I know I'm getting ready to go around on these curves. 
Just clip it, but do not clip all the way through. Okay, so I just, well, all I did was just went up and made some um, quick clips. Uh, Debbie uh, Beach, Beach, she's asking, uh, uh, do you normally use the industrial? Yes, I do. I sure do, yeah. Um, uh, this this little home machine is a fab, and I've had it for years. I've always had my home machines are pretty much either been singers or, or um, fats, I would say, um, and I and I love them. Uh, but yeah, when you get used to using an industrial, it's yeah, it's very hard to decide that you want to come back to a home machine. And this may be a little bit tedious on this. I, I may have to fib with you guys and do this so as quick. I want to make it as quick as possible so we get through it. But Ruth, I know, um, I'm not trying to pick on you, Ruth, but you use a home machine. You don't use industrial, and you have a uh, do a lot of wor uh, work. Don't you? And you see how cutting, uh, go ahead and pre um Giving your your cording some little notches there helps you go around. Would that be considered a relief cut? Yeah, it could be. <laughs> relief cut or just a little um, yeah, relief cut. That's a good one. Sometimes I think you could sew, Mr. Kenny V. No. No. I you just say that because you know, in my time of need here, you you kind of run the other way, right? Yeah. Okay. What did I do with my scissors? Okay, so I'm going to come to the top. And I'm going to give it a little snip so I can go around that corner. I know you can see that I just got a little snip into there. Uh, I've got a couple of comments. Okay. Uh, Ruth uh, says she wears new Kai uh, shears today. Oh, yes. Uh, she guess she loves her Bernina. Yeah, oh, Bernina, that's right. You know, and uh, yeah. Lori Boyer, uh, I can hardly believe that your home machine is going through all that. I know, huh? This is a great machine. I love Fats. Um, Bernina's a great machine too, and Fat. Yeah, I know this thing. You know, I it, it took me a long time. Well, a long time to uh, invest in the industrials. I think we have this misconception that the industrial machines are super, super expensive and we can't afford them. But in reality, it's the um, it's the home machines that are can be very uh, costly and you know they just don't they last but they are definitely not made okay here you go again I'm gonna give the relief cuts and uh, they're not made for heavy duty work on it well I don't know I should say I shouldn't say that because Ruth does hers daily so <laughs> Bonnie uh, says, replying to Ruth uh, says you can uh, screen uh, screen mirror or use your Apple TV Oh yeah, we don't have one of those. Uh, we're not that techy. We do. Apple I have, TV. Uh, you don't have to have Apple TV. You can you um. But if you have a smart TV, then yeah, I've got that. I can mm -hmm. uh, mirror um, things up there. And Debbie, uh, uh, she uses a fast machine also. Oh, do you? Yeah, they're like. You know what? Um, I used to do a lot of uh, French hand sewing and smocking, and you know, you just they all the smockers and all they talk about the fafs and the Braninas and the uh, uh, hell, well, I can't say it, the Vikings stuff, it has Varna or something, and they are just a huge component of all of that. And um, because you know, we need to do our little stitches. Oh, I'm gonna get stuck tonight. I have to, I mean, I would much rather be using my walking foot. Um, you know, that stuck. Ruth uh, uh, says industrials, uh, industrial machines are very reasonably priced. Yes. And uh, she, uh, she says that she doesn't get a lot of heavy fabrics, mostly polys. Okay, okay. Yeah, we, uh, my walking foot, and how many of you know what a walking foot is? A lot of the, um... Is that what's in your tennis shoe? Oh my gosh, here, let me put it in. Um, as I'm so, the walking foot machines, they 
um, they they have the upper the, the foot, and then they have the feet off, and they just kind of with the way they move, they just move your fabric. And a lot of upholsters, that's what a lot of upholsters use, and we use them when we're uh, making cushions and pillows and it, putting pleats in. It really doesn't, you know, matter. They they're just great. And we were at we were in. Let's talk about the artisan project. How many of you have been real, following real quick, this? Okay. Uh, Angie uh, is, is asking if that's a walking foot you have there. Yes. It. Um, this one here has a. Um, if you can see that little lever here when I switch the views again, it has a little foot. It does have a little push down foot that is, they call us a walking foot. And it really helps. Now, uh, I will use this machine. If I, if I really have some fabrics that are going to give me fits and I don't want any shifting, like maybe shears and things like that, um, if I'm putting in zippers and I need to get. Um, a, a, get real real close maybe a, a um, invisible zipper we can use our industrials for that as well but sometimes some of the fabrics just want to give you fits and you if you can just get over to the home machine and you know it just glides through it most of the time so I don't think I think I missed it but what I really wish I had on this machine was um, is the, the foot the knee lever to raise and lower the uh, the foot. I'll get it out. Concentrate on what I'm doing. Anyway, we we're going to tell you about. Does that answer her, your question? I think so. Uh, yes, yes. Um, anyway, we were in Texas. How many of you were following us uh, for the artisan project? And I think a lot of you. We've we've talked about it enough. Um, six. People had entered, oh, a lot of folks had entered a design for this, uh, somewhat of a contest, I guess you could say. And they, six people were selected for their design. And it's all kind of secret. There are a couple folks were showing some of their bits and pieces. And uh, we, I had an entry last year. I'm going to show you that entry in a few minutes. Um, and we had an entry, I had an entry last year. And so we decided I didn't want to enter this year. I just preferred to go and help. And it is so rewarding. It's so much fun. And folks are just so creative. And if you who's going to the IWCE? And that's the International Window Covering Expo. And it's going to be in uh, Nashville, Tennessee, uh, March 8th through the 10th, I believe. And we're going to go in early and help set up. So, and how many of you are going? And that's, I mean, a lot of folks uh, go to the, what they call it, it's a construction zone. And so they, anyway, all these entries are put up on display for the, ah, I cut it up, for the duration of the uh, show. And then in the construction zone, what they do is they have a little mini hands-on demo teaching type um, a little uh, it's a little teaching zone if you will we have hands-on classes and we also have uh, what they call presentation and I have cut myself in um, with a pen and uh, Ken will be teaching what are you going to be teaching? Toggle bolts or something? Teach wall anchors. Wall anchor. They going to be teaching Back by popular demand. Yep. Uh, that last year in Tampa, and uh, five minutes before our, my time was to start, all the seats were full and all the standing room was uh, occupied. You couldn't get another person in there. Yes, yeah, it was a popular class. It sure it was. And That's a small area. Not really. It probably <laughs> was like 200 people. Yeah. Yeah. No, there's probably, uh, seriously, you know, between 20 and 30. Yeah, there's quite a few people there for that. And then, like I guess I think I've told you all, I'm going to be teaching how to make little fabric pom poms to embellish. You get uh, like your pillows and even your draperies and um, uh, Roman shades and everything. So I was working on that a little bit today. And then I'm going to be making some Roman shades. And I'm going to be uh, teaching, talking about. Um, six or seven different headrail systems 
So if you were there, I hope you stopped by for that. That's going to be an hour-long presentation. Talk about motorization and um, just all the different headrail systems that there are. Because they can be uh, pretty um, confusing. And it's just, you know, which one should you use? And which ones do this? And how big are they? And, you know, so there's all kinds of questions folks have. And uh, so I will be talking about And then I will be sharing all that with all of you here because I know some of you have reached out to me and said, Sandra, I want to learn about it, but I can't go to the show. So, yes, you will be learning that here as well. So if you missed the show, we're sorry that you're going to miss the show. And, and before I forget, and I always forget this, um, I do give, I do teach here as well. And I have a class coming up in March. Um, we have some folks coming this month uh, for a class, but um, we've kind of cut that off for now. You know, we're going to take so many people. But we have another class coming up in March 21st through the 23rd uh, and on how to make Roman shades. And we're going to be doing, uh, you will be, the students will come away with a motorized, uh, at least one motorized shade. So if you're interested, um, just go on over to my website. It's, of course, lifeofsandrabee.com. And you can look under the three-day classes or whatever. So we give one-day classes sometimes and three-day classes sometimes. It just depends. And we'll be have, we're going to have more classes coming up through the, uh, throughout the year. Just have been super busy. But anyway, the Artisan Program project was so much fun, and we got to go around and visit everyone. Uh, we visited like, the, Melissa Hammond, we got to go to Waco, so we're going to run out of time. I hope we don't have, we might have to have one more episode, you guys. I might have to cut this off here. I just wanted to show you guys. I kept talking, so I can only go around these, and take your time going around these corners. Um, here, let me give you another where I'm at here. Can you see it? Well, that's the top down view. We really want this view. You've got another subscriber to your YouTube channel. Oh, yeah, who said that? Debbie Eachy. Oh, thank you, Debbie. Yes, please subscribe um, so that whenever I do put the videos out there, um, I, I try to put my lives out there and then I am adding other videos along the way because it's easier to find. I, oh, golly, I am just killing myself tonight. I should have had it. It is pelting down rain here, y'all. And I worry when we get bad weather because I don't want it to ruin our broadcast. Okay. You guys, I might run a little bit late tonight. I am, okay. And you, how many of you know that if this is going to be gross, I have a video on it. Um, and I'm not trying to demo for the video tonight, but. Um, if you bleed, this is gross, so if you don't want to hear it, plug your ears um, for a few seconds. But if you bleed on fabric, um, the best way to get the blood out is to, with your own saliva, and you have to actually suck it out. And it's gross, I know, but it works. Your saliva, your blood, your saliva. And I shouldn't have to say this, but don't ever suck out somebody's blood, else's blood, but that's the best way. Um, I am, can you give me a napkin? Because I am really having a hard time here. And I'm not going to do it on screen, but yeah. Or you can take, um, you can also take white thread and spit on the white thread and rub it into the blood and do that as well. If it's fresh blood. If it's dry blood, get out the peroxide. But test it on the fabric, edge of the fabric first. Okay. We made it through there. Okay, I have to rush because we're running out of time. All right. Machine out of the way. All right. So I'm sorry if that was gross, you guys. All right, there were some people saying something, but I could hear the popping. What did they say? Um. Debbie Beach, she's a uh, popular one on the screen here. Hey, and, Debbie. Uh, I want to meet uh, Debbie. She's getting uh, 10 inches of snow today. Oh. All the schools are closed. Man. What? I thought you got 10 inches of nothing for you folks, no? <laughs> okay, so I'm going to take out the pins real quick. I really need a band-aid, I think. 
Now, my little home machine is not, um, I was Russian, so and this is just my little sample. And it's fun to make samples too, if you're going to, if you're in the business, um, they're good little samples just to make them small and put them up so people can come and see what your work looks like. All right, I'm gonna cut that off. And I'm gonna, before I clip in here, I'm just gonna give it a quick look. I can take that tape off. Don't need that there. And you just flip it and, and you can see what it looks like. Make sure I'm not bleeding on this little sample. Okay. And if it looks good, and most of it does, I can go back and fix it off screen if I need to. But I think it's looking good. Okay, but you, I want you all to check yours really well, okay? All right, and then we're gonna flip it back. And I am going to go along and just trim this down. Now some of you, I have really hurt my scissors tonight too. I have a nice big uh, pair of the Kai scissors. This, these are these are the Kai's. How many of you have them? I love them. I think they're some of the best out there for us. <coughs> Can you go get me a black pair in there? Because this is not. I really messed it up with that pen. I didn't bring an extra pair in here tonight. Okay, so I'm just going along and I'm just going to trim this down. Fun to watch me cut this. <laughs> Let's just get some of that bulk out of there. No, uh, yeah, I need the black handle ones. The only ones I have to see. Okay, there we go. Here's the big ones. I just had these all sharpened. There we go. I feel like I was cutting wood in here. I didn't bring a trash can either. How many of you just throw your scraps on the floor? You sell. Okay, so is it Debbie that's who's in who's in North Carolina? Is it Debbie? No, she's in Wisconsin. Oh, that's right, Wisconsin. Um, I Now you don't have to put buckram in here. If you decide that you want your pleat to be nice and soft and fluffy. Jean Little. Jean Little, okay. Jean, so you have a custom um, workroom too. Oh, oh, uh, Sylvia May, uh, when do you Please. put the video on YouTube? Uh, when I missed part of it. Oh, uh, uh, when I um, all the other one through four are on there now, and this one um, we've got a lot. I, I should ha I should have this one up there. Probably give me. Um, I think we're pretty busy this week. A couple of days, maybe by the weekend, I should have this one up there. But they're still on. They still reside on the Facebook page, but they're just easier to find on YouTube and it's um, live with Sandra V.com. Everything's live with Sandra V.com. Makes uh, it easy. Debbie uh, Beachy, uh, have you made many panels like this for clients? Um, I, over the years, um, I have not, maybe not all of the elements, but bits and pieces of the elements, yes. Bonnie's uh, sewing room, she loves Kai. Yes. And uh, marsh grass uh, threads uh, trimming is better than clipping. What did she say? 
trimming is better than clipping. Yes, you uh, you can clip too, but just to you know, and I'm doing it. I just snip it a little bit more there, so I will have to go back and fix that. Cause I'm I hate when I rush. But I really wanted to finish it. I shouldn't so sloppy in front of you guys. I don't usually so sloppy. Okay. Now, if you, like I said, you do not have to put buckram in here if you want nice soft plates. I did put buckram in my big panel. And so what we can do here now is lay this out and we will take the buckram. And like I said, this is iron-on. So this is my iron-on side. As you can see, make sure this is nice and smooth. And lay this right on top. Actually, we're going to push it down to the seam line. I guess I should change my view for you. And we're going to put the top of it uh, right along that seam line. And then you can see right where your, or you can feel where your um, stitching line is. And you can go along here. And now you can just kind of cut that out around that stitching line. Debbie Beachy's uh, asking where to get most of your supplies. Um, I get a lot of my supplies from Rolly Company out of um, Gastonia. Okay, and because this is iron-on, and I'm going to move it along here, because this is iron-on, I will um, press this down. As you can see, you know, you have a little bit of an edge here, and that's okay. And then I'm going to go to the next one. And I'm going to do the same. I'm just going to trim it down. And you got a pin right where it's bubbled, bubbled up. Yeah. I would highly lay it down pins. on that. Well, yeah. that'd be iron. You don't want to leave the pin there now, do you? No, I don't. Um, I need to turn my iron on real quick. And you all might have another method of doing this, but... She just, uh, Debbie just created an account with them yesterday. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they have um, a lot of uh, the supplies that we need. I'm going to plug my iron in real quick. And, and they are wholesale to the tray, so you will need your um, tax ID number. Okay, I'm just going to keep going here. I might only turn one or two of these for right now, just so I can move on. Uh, Marsh grass, uh, do you have a duplex iron? I do not, Marsha. You know, that is interesting that you should say that. Um, I don't. Um, our ceilings are low here, and a lot of folks have them over, over the, their work free table. That's the ideal spot for them. Um, but being at the, uh, at the Artisan Weekend, uh, Beth Hodges, the sales rep from for Dufix. I don't think that's what her real title title is, but she's she's a rep for Dufix. She was there and she was teaching us. Uh, we were using a lot of Dufix products, and I do have some Dufix products here that I use. Uh, and I I I have a um, Rowenta, the big one. Get the big boiling thing on the bottom, uh, and it does the trick for me, but I do like the Dufix products. And she's almost sold me on a Dufix iron. So I'm just, you know, thinking about it. And, uh, hang on, just making sure I'm thinking about this here. And so, but the, the products are great. And they really come in handy when sometimes you just can't, So, or hand stitch something. A few weeks ago, I had a 
two five width panels lined and interlined and they were pretty long and the I had to um, hand stitch all the hems and the sides because they just wouldn't um, oh my god I didn't turn on oh, there we go. and the um, the fabric wouldn't go through my blind hemmer and so I had to go ahead and hand stitch and a do fix uh, iron with do fix products would have come in real handy but I didn't but have you one. You still got a pin underneath that. Oh, okay. You were talking about there's another one in the middle. Is there? Okay. Thank you. What would I do with that chip? I would have known it once I hit it with the iron. Yeah. But, okay. Um, so I don't. Do you? Who has a do fix out there? Yep. Nobody was looking into one. Yep. They're, they're pretty great. Sure. Um, the girls out there, they had a do fix, they had a reliable, and they had a Euro Steam as well. You guys, we're going to run late, so if you don't, don't mind, if you want to hang in there a little bit, if you have to go, you can watch the replay. I fully understand, but I really want to finish this as much as possible tonight. Okay, so if you guys want to hang in there. So who has a do fix? Did they say? No, nobody's going to clean on that. But yeah, they, they really have, I'm trying to think, they have this one um, product called Crash. And you lay it on to the back side of fabric and then you steam over the top of the fabric. And it just draws up and it looks like it's all um, kind of, I wouldn't say smock, but kind of smock. What would you say? Crinkly. Crinkly, yeah. And I put it out there. I think you guys might have seen it. Yeah, my eyes are going crazy. All right, so we've pressed this in. Let me trim this off a little bit here, too. Kat, talk to out there and says hello. <laughs> and she <laughs> says she's had the uh, do fix for 20 years and love. <laughs> yes, Kathy Tucker. She was there. How many of you know Kathy Tucker? She's my special friend. And um, she is called the Traveling Workroom Temp. This lady has so many years of experience. And if you're a workroom or if you need help, whatever, she will go and uh, she travels and she helps folks. So, yeah. And she's she's not that old. She must have started young. She <laughs> Okay. So now what we're going to do is we're going to flip this. Okay. So we have the buckram to the back and we've trimmed it out. And now I'm going to turn it over get to the right angle here and we're just going to go ahead and I didn't trim that one. You guys, I promise I am in better in real life than I am up here. I, I just didn't want one more episode. I really wanted to. So, seems like I'm slowing, slowing slow. I'm not. And then you're just going to turn it. And see, you're, by doing it this way, your, um, your buckram is not on your facing that goes to the back. It's on the back of your face, which keeps this nice and firm. Okay, because if you put it onto this facing, well, I guess you still could push it to the back, but I don't know, it just gives the face and your pleats a little bit more firmness, I think. I'm just gonna flip it. I'm just pushing out those um, corners and I can feel where I've trimmed it back, and I can just roll that right back as I'm doing this. And you flip it this way. Like I said, you don't have to use buckram, and I'm going to show you um, two different pleats. Actually, this is fun if you put it this way. And then you can just take your thumb and put it up in that corner. And just flip back with your other hand. Is everybody still with me? Sorry if you have to go. I understand. Um, Sharon uh, Gizzy, uh, hey, Sharon. I like to use long uh, tweezers uh, or a chopstick to poke those corners. Yes. That, oh, chopsticks. That is really cool. Now see this, I didn't trim this and, one. Uh, Ruth, uh, thank you, but she has to go. Okay, Ruthie, I understand. But you know we have it on the replay. Let's see, I didn't get this one really. It wasn't 
going to turn. Uh, Kathy uh, Bryant, she says adorable and shows uh, perfect fabrics. Thanks. Yeah, you all help me. Um, it was a community event. That's right. That's right. You all helped me choose what was going to go where. Sometimes we just need somebody else to help us make the decisions, right? Okay. So now that we have this, and see now your facing is already finished, right? You don't have to worry about that and lifting up a whole panel and then just make sure everything smooth, smooth down. And if you have to, like um, Sharon said, get up in there with a cho some chopsticks or how many of you have that purple thing? There's that little purple device that they call the purple thing. And you can poke that. Okay, turn my iron back up. And then you can just go ahead and just press this down. And this is not the iron I usually use. Y'all just I just told you the other iron's on a cart. And just go ahead and pull out those corners and just kind of press it down. Okay. I think you're caught on something. Yeah. Got a leash. It's here. Okay. And once you do that, you can go back to your uh, edge. If you've got that buckram in there, you can go ahead and trim some of that out. Try to do it backwards. That's not going to work. Yeah, so Kathy, if you're still out there, we had a really good time. And uh, like I said, she is a traveling workroom temp. And she just hops in there and she knows so much knowledge. She's so versatile. Okay, this is where I'm going to take that cording. Can you all see that? Let me get it against there. To take that cording and I'm just going to pull it. And I'm just going to cut some of that out there. I don't want all that bulk. And then I'm going to pull it back. Okay, and that flattens it out. And then I'm just going to roll this back and roll this side in there. And it's that one and a half. And the one and a half. So we have three. Okay. And I know some of you press. Some of your sides, some of you don't, some of you use do fix, some of you use um, a blind hammer, and some of you will hand him. Now I would say on this one, on the one, the big one that I made, I did hand stitching. Okay, and I just pin this. So you're definitely going to have to hand stitch something like this. You don't have to worry about stitching down the facing because whenever you put the pleats in there, that those will just come together. And then on that lead edge, I'm just going to flip it around. Any questions so far? How many people are still here with me? Oh, back up 14. <laughs> they were as high as 1400. Uh, most people dropped off. And same here. They see that I wouldn't mess in front of the camera. Oh, sorry about that. Okay, and I did the same. I went ahead and pulled some of that uh, cording out of the edge at the end and give me a little flat edge. Car Carly uh, just joined us. Hey, Carly. She's got that time, time change. She must have missed, uh, read the time. So that was Carly from um, Dixon. Yes, we just saw Carly last week too. Can you guys believe Dixon? Excuse me. Dixon, yep. That it has been over a week now since we've seen you guys. Okay, and so that lead edge, I'm going to bring that around to the back, and I'm just going to tuck in this top piece, and then I'm going to pin it for right now. But later I will go and I will hand him this side here. Two pins in here. Okay, and then once I stitch my sides, and I'm going to stitch along this top edge, and when I stitch this top edge, I tucked that 
little piece down of that cording and then I put my needle just through the, uh, the ditch where the banding meets the cording and I ran it back and forth and my uh, thread was hidden in the ditch and then I just hand stitched along this lead edge on my bottom and I did the same on the return side. Okay, just I hand stitched the large one. Okay. Now that we do that, have done that, then you will take your top, move it back, and you will line them up. And remember, our uh, our pleats were uh, five and a half inches wide. And so what it was half five and a half is uh, 2.75. 2, 2, 2 and so from this point over, you're going to stitch down. You're going to start up here. Um, and this is really where a walking foot comes in. Uh, usually when I start with my walking foot, I'll start here uh, down maybe about three quarters to an inch. And I back tack. And then I come back down this way. Because a lot of times if you start right here on this edge, nine times out of ten, it slides. So I line it up, come down three quarters to an inch, I back tack, and then I come down. And now let me show you what I did on to the big one. How many of you stitch your pleats that way? That you back tack first. Okay. Bonnie's uh, sewing room says I uh, have to run. I absolutely love window treatment. Uh, good night, all. Okay, good night, Bonnie. And you can catch the replay if you like, but we're almost done anyway. So, what I have done on mine, I have stitched down um, probably about about seven inches. Okay, I know you can see that I've stitched here, and I w stitched all my pleats. And then I came back and determined what kind of pleat, how I wanted to finish off my pleat. Hey, I've got a lot of fabric here. It's a lot of pattern going on, isn't there? <laughs> okay, now let me explain a couple things to you all. I really liked the, remember I told you how I like my uh, goblet with a little bit of a gather. I know it's hard to see, there we go, with a little bit of a gather. But there was so much fabric in there um, that I really didn't like the look of it. Okay, And here I put the little gather down further where the facing, uh, down below the facing. But then I felt like it was too long. What do you all think? I just felt like that was just a too long of a goblet. Now, if you're making panels probably 130, 140 inches long, and then that might be okay. You might need that length. Uh, so then I said, okay, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pleat it up the bottom with a three prong, and I hand stitched, um, I hand stitched the pleat together. Okay. And I think that after all, I do like, I would, I guess I would say the traditional method. Then you can take and you can decide how you want to stuff your goblet plate. And you can stuff it with foam. I've got some, uh, I've cut up some little pieces of foam that can cut with bad scissors. And you can stuff your goblet with foam. This one here, let me see if I can hold it up here. This one has foam in it. And then I took some batting, some leftover batting, and I stuffed this one with batting. This one is not stuffed. And this pleat is not stuffed either. And if you like a softer pleat, you don't, you don't have to stuff it. Let me give you a close-up look. And I know you can certainly tell the difference between these two. And they look somewhat similar. Uh, and, and this one here, you can tell it's a little bit softer. And this one here, I'm going to take it out and make it uh, the same as um, these three and do that. So 
there you go. Um, one other tip that I want to give to all of you, as you're making your uh, uh, panel, write down the steps that you took. Okay, because a lot of times uh, if we might not have to make a panel like this for a long time and we might forget some of the steps or some of the cuts. And even like uh, for me, writing this down, I'm going to write down that I don't think I'm, that the nine and a half inches that I've cut for my facing is what I want for the future. I might want to cut it back maybe two inches. That way I'm not worried about a lot of the bulk in the bottom of my pleat. It will take some of that bulk out of there. Or maybe you don't, I have inner lining in here, maybe you don't want inner lining. So that's it. I hope that you all have learned a lot and you've enjoyed the series. And one more, I'm going to um, give you one more close up of how I finish the tops up. And like I said, you could have stopped your cording anywhere in here if you wanted to. But I just left it and stitched it. And I think that um, it looks it looks okay. All right. So any questions? Any any um, any other? Let me see. Any other real comments? And I <laughs> uh, and I want to just say uh, next week we are going to be starting on it's somewhat of a cornice, and it is this is half of it. Remember the glasses that I did for the artisan program? We are going to be doing, um, <laughs> we are going to be working on that. And it's kind of a cornice method. And it's going to be a lot of fun. And let me just show you. Hang on. If you can hang on one minute. No, oh, it's going to take for me. Hang on. Command seven. There you go. And there, there they are. Um, see the blue glasses? And that's the shade that went along with it, the motorized. And watch as it goes up. And there you go. So that's what we will be starting on next week. Um, I'm going to make a smaller version and I'm going to do uh, kind of a peachy salmon vinyl. So I'm really excited about that. But again, thank you everyone for uh, hanging in there with me tonight. I hate to run over. And please, if you're making your panels and your different methods, share them with us on the live show, on the Live with Sandra V Facebook page. Okay, have a great week and we will see you all next Tuesday at 7 p.m. Night everyone.